Okay, today we're going to be talking about half-ton trucks, more specifically towing with half-ton trucks, and everything that we did to get our Ford F-150 pulling our travel trailer all around North America. This has been a highly requested video, and we're excited to share with you everything we did. Every good truck video needs a hand model. Trish? Yes? Do you, you have what you need? Absolutely. First, let's cover some basics. I am not sponsored by Ford. This is not an ad for Ford. And if anything of our videos over the past 18 months has taught us is that every truck has something absolutely wonderful about it. And if you're door Dodge or Chevy, GMC, Toyota, whatever, these are good trucks. We have just had uh, exceptional success with Ford uh, over the past 100,000 miles. And a lot of people have asked, how is your truck holding up? How is it doing towing? So let's first talk about the truck. The truck is a 2013 Ford F-150 4x4 Platinum with the 6.2 liter engine. And it just rolled over 100,000 miles. During that time, I've only done two things. I've, well, three things. I've changed the oil. I upgraded the battery in Canada to an interstate battery because it was dying and I replaced the fuel pump fuse for $15. Those are the only things I've done on this truck for the past 100,000 miles. But there are some other things I did to get the truck ready to pull ginger. So we added uh, Firestone Ride Right Air, we extended the mirrors, and I added the WeatherTech mats, and we put in the bike racks, and I also changed the rear suspension. So let's go talk about those things now. Okay, let's talk about probably the biggest upgrade we made to get this truck ready to tow, and that is the Firestone Ride Right. Basically, I had a bit of a sagging problem. And when we were going through Montana, and we were going through Wisconsin, I just got tired of seeing the truck sagging in the back. And I know a lot of people have had success with the helper springs, and I actually put the helper springs on once we got to Michigan with Trish. And I rode those helper springs all the way to Maine, Belfast, Maine, and that's where I took them off. And counting this one, I have three left, I think. Three until you need to pull off the helper springs. They basically did not make that big of an impact. They they only prevented the sag by about one inch, and plus they made all sorts of noise when I hit bumps. The brackets would like make this big clinking sound, and I just couldn't stand it. So I moved. I took those off in uh, in Maine within the 30 days on Amazon. I returned those to Amazon, and I got the Firestone Ride. Right, and uh, if you've been watching the channel for a long time, you know those were actually installed professionally and incorrectly in Maine, and they didn't get fixed until we got to Paso Robles, California, where the bracket was basically upside down. It wasn't letting your leaf springs do anything. It was taking all the weight. Yeah. So anytime anyone disconnects their airline, they should cut a new one before they yeah. put it back on? Yeah, because the barbs that hold the airline in actually mm -hmm. make scratches when you pull it out. Gotcha. And then that will get by the over. So go check that out check that video out if you're ever gonna install Firestone yourself so you don't make that mistake, but I doubt you will. So anyhow, the, the Firestone has been fantastic and I elected to go with the non-compressor version, which basically means that there's an airline that goes through the truck and it goes out the back and they put the uh, little Presti valves on the license plate so I can, I can pump them up. And a lot of people use an air compressor uh, if you have a bicycle pump, you can easily put anywhere from 30 to 100 pounds of, of air in your airbags with a simple bicycle pump. But if you talk to a gearhead about using a bicycle pump to put air in your truck bags, they will probably throw up in their mouth. So that's just something you want to do quietly on your own. Mirrors are probably the most essential upgrade you can make to a half ton truck if it does not have the mirrors that either like pull out like Ford does or Dodge, they actually kind of roll out. So if you don't have towing mirrors on your half ton truck, then something like this might be your only option. Now these were not very expensive and actually I was a little skeptical when I bought them on Amazon, but they've turned out to be fantastic mirrors. So basically this mirror right here, it goes out really far and it gives me the ability to see all the way down the side of the rig. And basically all they do is they slip on like this, you fit them into place, and then you've got a little wedge here like that, and it goes it goes in on the mirror like this. And then when this comes when this comes over, this screws into that hole and it secures it. It's absolutely simple. Now, I just noticed today, now keep in mind we've been traveling 
for probably 40 to 50,000 miles. I just noticed a little bit of chafing right here. And so I think one suggestion is when you use these mirrors on your truck, if you want to keep your ex your you know OEM original mirrors uh, looking good, maybe you put a little chafing tape right there just to protect that or any area chafe. I think I see there's a little chafing here, here, and right here. Okay, let's talk about the WeatherTech mats. These have been an absolute lifesaver. Uh, the reason that I like WeatherTech so much is that their mats are laser cut to your exact truck specification. So when I went on the uh, WeatherTech website, I basically said that it was a 2013 truck. I said I had the bucket seat configuration, I had the subwoofer under this seat, and then you order mats that are exactly cut for your truck. So these things go up on every little corner and then they have lips on the end so if the kids spill, if the kids spill any drinks, the water literally goes into like a gutter and then it just drains out when you open the door. These things have been remarkable and it's absolutely saved our carpets. The thing I like the most is when we pull into a, a place to clean the truck, I can pull these mats out, I can pressure wash them. I don't even need to like scrub them. Literally, I can pressure wash the mats and they look brand new. I throw them back in the truck, everything's great. We have received so many comments on the bike racks and the reason I have not done a specific video on these bike racks which hold five bikes is because I would never do it like this again. But I can offer you some suggestions as to what I would do again. So let me tell you what's currently done. Basically, this is just quarter inch steel angle iron. There's two bars that go across and they're mounted with a couple screws that go on the lip of the bed. And then what happens is I've got these uh, Thule racks. I think this is called a side mount uh, system like that. These things are not uh, inexpensive. So I got two of these right here where I do not have to take off the wheels and these bikes face backwards. And then I have the fork mounts on the front with these little trays in the back for the back tire. So three bikes go forward, two bikes go backwards. So it's worked out pretty well, but here's the deficiency. The, white, the bikes all in all probably weigh over 100 pounds. And the mounting point to this bracket right here is basically on a really thin piece of metal and it busted, which is why I got my propane tank holding this thing up. I would not do this again. What I would do uh, next time is I would get a standard Thule mount that is kind of like a rooftop mount and I would put it directly on the top of this. I would just put two holes right down through the truck bed and mount it. What that would give you the ability to do is use a standard Thule bar, which means you could use all standard Thule parts, which by the way, we're not working with Thule. This is not an ad for Thule. I just happen to be using Thule. So if I did, if I did that system, basically all of the, all the weight would actually be put on the mount on top of the bed and it would be way better. Plus, I would have it about another six inches up, which would give me more room for stuff in the bed of the truck. Okay, let's talk about trailer brakes. This is another absolutely critical feature to have if you're pulling a travel trailer. Now, this Ford has the built-in electric trailer brakes in the cab, which goes through the seven-point pin that you put in on your trailer. So, basically, if I just squeeze these, if I squeeze this knob right here, the brakes depress in the trailer. But in addition, I can set the trailer brakes to when I depress the pedal, it initiates the trailer brakes, and then there's a little screen that tells me how far that those brakes are depressed. If this is something that your truck doesn't have and you're considering pulling a travel trailer with your half ton truck, I would highly suggest getting an aftermarket electric trailer brake installed. It's critical to your uh, truck brakes to make sure you don't burn through those, but just in terms of stopping, it's absolutely essential. But probably the most important thing, if you're ever in a trailer sway situation, uh, that is your absolutely go-to move to depress those trailer brakes and straighten things out. Basically, you've got to get the momentum either going forward or you've got to get the trailer going back, but um, that's the first thing I do. If we're in a high wind situation or I see the trailer like starting to move like that, I can just go down, depress the trailer brakes for just a second, and it just straightens things straighten things out. Okay, so there you have it. Those are some of the very simple upgrades that we did to get this truck ready to pull our RV. And a lot of people have asked, how come I didn't go with a three quarter ton truck? Or how come we didn't go with a diesel to pull our travel trailer? And the very simple answer is, this is the truck we have. And Trish and I learned that if you wanna make something happen, you have to start with what you have to get going. The best rig in the world, the perfect rig, the big fancy rig, or a perfect diesel truck, if that is going to hold you back from getting started, then it's the wrong rig. Just start with what you have and upgrade 
later. That's been our philosophy, and that's how we've been able to hit three countries, 38 states, and over 40,000 miles with a half-ton truck and a 28-foot travel trailer. And if you like this video, give it a thumbs up, and if you're new to the channel, then subscribe. It's because we release a new video every Sunday with our RV travel around North America, and we will see you this weekend. 10,000 pound. <laughs> so sorry. I tried. Okay, 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 my eyes are watering. Okay, okay, I got this, okay. Okay. Go. Okay, today we're gonna be talking about half-ton trucks, more specifically, towing with half-ton trucks, and everything we did. <laughs> are you joking me? <laughs> I'm so sorry. I'm just looking right. <laughs>